Hi, I'm Jenny from Trackside Model Railroading. This video preview shows our Blu-ray and DVD of the ATSF Pass Canal Division and the Western Pacific Silverdale. Both layouts are HO scale. The full movie is two hours long. It features rail fanning on the Pass Canal as well as an interview with Jerry about building techniques and an operating session. It also features rail fanning in Silverdale and an F7 mock-up that Bruce built. From the expansive sandy plains in the west, through the deep, gorgeous red rock canyons, and over the mountains to the dry inland desert, the ATSF's Pascanel Division is hopping with long freights hauled by powerful multi-unit consists of F-units, RSDs, and Jeeps on Jerry Boudreaux's beautiful freelanced railroad. The Pascanel Division's main line is located 40 to 60 miles south of the prototypical Santa Fe line through northern Arizona and New Mexico. Jerry models his HO scale version of the Santa Fe in 1967. I'm here with Jerry Boudreau at the Pascanel Division. And uh, Jerry, we just uh, want to ask you about your uh, million dollar curve here and what inspired you to build this. The million dollar curve behind us here is 96 inch radius curve. It spins off of a center point in the middle of a peninsula. So what I have is I've got the center point, and then I have a double track main, 36 and 38 and a quarter inch radius. Then I go to the old main, and then I take 48 inches for my aisleway. I take about four inches for scenery between the track and the fascia, and that ends up being 96 inch radius curve right here. We call it million dollar curve, because Jeff Million has a curve like this on his layout in uh, West Salem. And also Lee Nicholas has a great big curve like this on his layout in Corinne, Utah. I operated on both those layouts and I find them to be uh, really, uh, ex really exceptional to watch trains go around 96 inch radius curves. Plus these are super elevated by 40 thousandths. So my big long passenger trains lean into the curve and look very realistic. We filmed trains during an actual operating session at Jerry Boudreaux's Pascanel Division. Here, we see four F7s hauling stock cars into Summit on the upper level. The crew member uncouples the string of cars so he can add to the train. Three brand new FP-45s lead the Super C, brightening up Big Spring Canyon as they hustle toward Red Rock Loop and Summit. These units are so new that a whiff of fresh paint can be smelled throughout the canyon. When the sea shows up on the division, all trains get out of the way. Anyone stabbing the sea will get a call from Chicago and have to explain just why that happened to the boss. We hear it's not a pleasant experience. The piggyback train traverses Red Rock Loop and continues west toward Summit. The sea pulls into Summit on the upper level. Jerry often adds scenic interest by designing an elevation change in the foreground between the track and the fascia. The ops crew is building a produce train on the lower level in the Pascanel yard. Blue and yellow abound in the Pascanel locomotive facility, or the house, as it's known to crew members. It takes about 50 locomotives to support an average ops session not including power permanently assigned to through trains in the staging yard, which numbers another 50 units. These are mostly Walther's and Athern DCC powered units with sound. Each of these terminal tracks has several kill switches, so these units only have power when they're needed. We just arrived in Silverdale, Oregon this evening to rail fan for a few days. If you look closely by the pond, you'll see fireflies near the brush by the water.
This is the daily coming into Silverdale. Being so close to seawater creates a never-ending battle with rust on the railroad's locomotives. The crews often refer to this one as the rusty horse. We paced the train from Highway 30. It looks like someone else is real fanning the WP today also. I think I saw his camera flash. As the cattle car passes, we notice that we can see through the boards and that the car is empty. We hurried down to the other end of town as we heard that the Silverdale special crew had been sent out again to pick up the tank car. It's arriving much earlier this evening than it did the other day. We watch number 601 push the fuel toward the port. That about wraps up what we have time for today.